with the latest Star Citizen patch offering a compelling multi-crew option, it seems only appropriate to show the most powerful military option currently available. The Aegis Hammerhead bolts six powerful turrets to a single chassis and invites you to indulge yourself in the fearsome firepower that it offers. But does that make it worth buying? I'm Farrister, and in this video I review the Star Citizen ship, the currently flyable Aegis Hammerhead. The Hammerhead is envisaged as an anti-fighter gun platform, well suited for escorting even larger ships. Words you might use could include gunship, corvette or flakboat. In reality, compared to the ships that are currently flyable in game, the Hammerhead is one of the heaviest options out there, and probably one of the closest to an implementation of a capital ship, albeit I accept that technically it might not be a capital ship itself. For those of you who've seen other ship reviews on this channel, you'll know the format to expect. This video is split into five sections, starting with a ship tour, assessing combat performance, reviewing handling and visibility, looking at the operating costs before finally summarising. I've included timestamps in the video description in case you want to skip ahead, and if you're one of the three quarters of people watching who isn't yet subscribed to the channel, you may choose to subscribe to be notified of future videos. Part 1 – Ship Tour Whilst there are multiple entry points into the Hammerhead, for the purpose of this tour we'll start by going up one of the elevators. There's one on the port and one on the starboard side. These take you up into the main through deck of the Hammerhead. From the corridor moving towards the front of the ship takes you to another hallway. On either side, right at the front, are the front turrets, port and starboard. There's access to the bridge, which we'll come to shortly. And then right at the front is the airlock. This will be used particularly if you're docking with a station. For the most part the Hammerhead is a symmetrical ship, so the turret on the front, starboard and port side are the same. Each of the turrets does have a door, which aside from sometimes getting stuck in, is also a potential entry point into the Hammerhead in a combat situation. Moving past the elevators which lead down to the surface leads to another hallway. Off the junction there is some escape pods, and then the rear port and starboard turret access. This is mirrored on each side of the ship. There's handy signing to help you find what you're looking for, both above and below. Right in the centre of the ship is access to the upper turret. There's also an elevator which leads to the upper deck of the hammerhead. And for aspiring captains amongst you, there's also a fully fitted captain's quarters. Sadly, the captain's quarters poses limited use in-game at the moment, but does come with its own bed and bathroom. moving out back towards the rear of the ship. Again mirrored on either side is an engineering room. This includes an engineering station. And then on the inside of the rear section are the crew quarters. In the crew quarters are a substantial number of beds, as well as two bathrooms, one on each side. As you'll see, each bathroom is fairly similar in looks.
and then moving towards the rear of the main deck is the cargo area. The large cargo area in the centre is a deployable ramp which will take you to the surface. There's also an elevator and a ladder to the upper deck. Finally, right at the back of the hammerhead is the rear turret. Now looking at the upper deck moving from front to back. From the elevator which goes from the amidships position up to the upper deck you enter into a corridor. There's some component access and then you get to the mess hall. Inside the mess hall you've got what you might expect. You've got a table with seating around it, a canteen style shelving and some appliances. There's also one of the few windows on the hammerhead. And then on the front side of the mess hall there is a small storage cupboard. Moving towards the back of the ship on the upper deck takes you through to the engineering section. From the top deck there's a little window which shows down as well as an engineer station. Finally there's the elevator which leads to the main deck as well as a ladder option. And then finally all the way back to the front of the ship on the main deck is the door marked to the bridge. Opening the door reveals an elevator and a ladder which take you down into the bridge itself. The bridge, other than having a security door attached, is largely a self-enclosed deck. There's a pilot and a co-pilot seat. Part 2 – Combat Performance The primary armament of the Hammerhead consists of six manned turrets. There are two port, two starboard, one up top amidships and one at the rear. Each turret is armed with four size 4 weapons, defaulting to Rhino laser repeaters. In the current patch they work just fine, with a low time to kill and fairly decent individual capacitors on each turret. The turrets themselves have good coverage around the ship. Best case is for targets slightly above the nose where five turrets can engage the same target, so as the pilot it's great to keep your primary enemy in your sights. If you're in a furball though, having each turret independently engage different targets is also pretty awesome. Further, the hammerhead is armed with a total of 8 missile hardpoints. They default to size 3 missiles, making for a total of 32 independent munitions, but the hardpoints themselves can be upsized, and so you might do well to mix those stock size 3 missiles with a few size 5 mini torpedoes, which will help when engaging larger targets. Defensively, the hammerhead does you proud. It's by no means invincible, but it's decently tanky, and even engaging an Idris, unless you take a shot from the railgun, you can generally manage your shields and disengage if needed. The stock shield generators are fairly strong too, although if you really wanted to push for top performance they could be upgraded. The brochureware does discourage you from ramming, and that's probably sensible in the current patch, but sometimes a little bump might work in your favour. Part 3 – Handling and Visibility So, given the size of the hammerhead it probably won't be a huge surprise that visibility isn't great. It's not terrible either, to be fair, but is largely limited to directly in front and beneath the nose. The big blind spot is above, which can be challenging, for example when leaving a hangar. One nice feature is that the thrusters that roll the ship are visible when they fire, which is a nice touch. Handling wise, the hammerhead is a fairly heavy ship and handles accordingly. It's not particularly difficult to fly if you take it steady and are sensible about not trying to go too fast or pull too many stunts. Plus the all around turret coverage makes life a little easier as you don't feel that you always have to be facing every target. One unique feature is the ability to dock to space stations, 
although you might do well to use the automated docking rather than manually piloting it, as on a ship of this size it can get a little tedious. Insofar as the stock quantum drive, it's a must upgrade really. The ATS-2 cuts down travel times by more than half, and the Hammerhead still carries more than enough quantum fuel to cross the whole Stanton system with it. Part 4 – Operating Costs So it can cost a fair amount to repair, rearm and refuel your Hammerhead. It isn't unusual to see costs in the tens of thousands of Alpha UEC. Not to mention that much of your earnings could be split across the sizeable crew. That said, the Hammerhead is well suited to cover those costs through completing combat contracts. It's incredibly efficient at tearing through all manner of contracts and can be great fun doing so. It's probably not the most optimum option, with some lower cost ships probably making more of a profit doing so, but it can more than cover the costs. There's a cargo bay at the rear which allows up to 40 cargo units of storage, whether that's for trading, a small rover or perhaps for box delivery contracts. None of these are ideal, but do present as money making options for the Hammerhead. Part 5 – The Verdict Some of you have asked to discuss loadout changes, and for the Hammerhead I'd suggest mostly keeping everything as default. Personally, I upgrade the shields to FR86 generators, the quantum drive to a TS2, and change out half the missiles for size 5 torpedoes. There's a lot to love about the Hammerhead. The feeling of firepower is visceral, and the experience in combat is incredible, whether in the turret, pilot's chair, or watching on. In patch 3.14 there's also a potential role for a co-pilot in helping to organise the battlefield and potentially running missiles. As a veritable combat powerhouse, the Hammerhead offers a great balance of defences and attack options against most size of targets in the game. It has a military look and feel to it which is really appealing. Moreover, with the layout being largely based on the main deck, it's a little easier for the crew to find where they're going. And that's the only caveat, the crew. This ship needs a number of players to operate it, which is on the one hand great, but on the other hand means it's a ship you'll likely not take out as often as others. Without a crew, the hammerhead becomes a sitting duck. So that brings us to price. The Hammerhead comes in at 12.5 million Alpha UEC in game, or upwards of $600 out of game. Either price for a single player is, to me, too much. Don't get me wrong, the Hammerhead is truly a fantastic ship, and for 12.5 million Alpha UEC, well worth the purchase price, but it only works for a team, as a group ship. So should you buy it? Well, <laughs> don't ask me. Ask your friends. But you can let me know your thoughts on whether you agree by sharing in the comments and giving this video a thumbs up like. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you're feeling nostalgic, I did review the Hammerhead as one of my earliest Star Citizen videos well over a year ago, which might be interesting to see how the ship and this channel has evolved. Otherwise, as always, thank you for watching.